The release of the Nintendo DS was a massive success for Nintendo. Gamers were picking up the new system in droves. New software was rolling out for the system in full force. The battle for the handheld market was only just beginning. With Sony's more powerful PSP out in all regions by the end of 2005, Nintendo faced down its biggest competition since the late 80s, as their pseudo-monopoly on the handheld gaming market was challenged. This is the story of the Nintendo DS. In this part, we'll be taking a look at Sony and Nintendo throughout 2005 and 2006, as their new systems duked it out with one another. We'll also be studying the GBA, as it began to wane as one of Nintendo's three pillars. The launch windows for the Nintendo DS helped the Game Boy Advance remain more relevant during late 2004 and 2005. New software continued to be released for the system, including titles from heavy-hitting series like The Legend of Zelda and Pokemon. Developers at Nintendo continued to experiment with the system, despite more powerful hardware being available. One of these titles, WarioWare Twisted, first launched in Japan in October 2004, almost two months before the Nintendo DS launched title wouldn't come to Western markets until the following spring, far after North American and PAL regions received the new system. After a strong show at E3 2004, Nintendo hoped to achieve similar success at E3 2005. Most of their press conference was devoted to the Nintendo Revolution. The Game Boy Advance wasn't forgotten, however. Much like he did the year before, Reggie fils appeared on stage to announce a new iteration of the Game Boy Advance. He pulled a small console out of his blazer and revealed the Game Boy Advance Micro. The system was the smallest Game Boy to date, measuring 4 inches wide and 2 inches long. The Micro wasn't meant to be a replacement for the Game Boy Advance SP or the Nintendo DS. Nintendo stated that the handheld would be an alternative to these other systems. A few months later, Nintendo revealed the launch date and price of the Game Boy Advance Micro. The new system came out in North America on September 17, 2005 for $99.99. The small system was similar to the Game Boy Advance SP, having a backlit screen and a rechargeable battery. However, the Micro was unable to play original Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, similar to the DS's limitations. The system ended up selling poorly overall, with Nintendo noting that sales were below their expectations. The Game Boy Advance Micro might have been a bigger success if the Nintendo DS wasn't selling so well. In the end, it was the last major release for the Game Boy line, as new software releases would begin to slow down after 2005. One of the biggest games Nintendo showed off at E3 2005 was a pet simulator for the Nintendo DS. Nintendogs was a new IP under the watchful eye of legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto. Early concepts for the pet simulator go back to the late 90s, when Miyamoto and other developers at Nintendo were creating software for the failed Nintendo 64 DD. The title was known as Cabbage, and was a pet raising simulator. While the concepts for the project were ambitious, the game never got off the ground during development, perhaps in part due to the commercial failure of the 64DD in Japan. Miyamoto continues to toy with the idea of a pet simulator after Cabbage was cancelled. Inspired in part after his family received a puppy, Miyamoto began producing a new pet simulator title for the Nintendo GameCube as a technical demo. As ideas for the game came together, Hideki Kono took over development of the title at Nintendo as its producer. The title shifted development away from the GameCube and onto the DS, which was still in development at the time. In interviews before the game's release, Kono stated that the shift in development came about due to the additional features the Nintendo DS had, including its touchscreen and microphone. Nintendogs was developed with non-gamers and casual consumers in mind. With this in mind, Nintendo president Satoru Iwata suggested that Nintendogs receive up to 15 different versions, one for each breed of dog. The idea was for players to pick out a version of the game, like a family picking a dog breed at the kennel. Debugging processes would cause Nintendo's developers to drastically reduce the amount of titles available. Three versions of Nintendogs were developed instead, with each version housing different puppy breeds for the player to adopt. Gameplay across all versions of Nintendogs remained the same, similar in concept to Nintendo's Pokemon series. On April 21st, 2005, Nintendo's Dashund, Chihuahua, and Shiba were released in Japan, to strong critical reception and massive commercial success. Titles sold over 150,000 copies combined during their first week on the Japanese market, and helped boost Nintendo DS sales in the region. A North American launch followed on August 22nd, 2005. The launch of Nintendogs was accompanied by a price cut for the Nintendo DS system bringing it down to $129.99. 
three versions of the game were released in North America, although Sheba in France was replaced by Lab in France due to the breed's popularity in North America. North American outlets praised the game, and it sold over 250,000 copies during its launch week. PAL regions received the title a few months later, during the fall of 2005. Nintendog's mania continued into the holiday season, with the release of a special edition Nintendo DS bundle titled Best Friends. This North American exclusive version of Nintendogs featured many of the same dogs as the previous released versions. One final release of Nintendogs came in 2006, Dalmatian and Friends for the North American and PAL markets. Combined, Nintendogs is one of the most successful Nintendo DS games of all time, selling nearly 24 million units across all versions of the game. To date, it is the second best-selling title for the Nintendo DS. Nintendogs wasn't the only big release Nintendo had for 2005. In November 2005, Mario Kart DS released a strong reviews and stellar sales. The title became the first on the Nintendo DS to utilize Nintendo's Wi-Fi services, giving players their first opportunity to play against each other online for the Nintendo DS and in the Mario Kart series. 2005 saw some other big releases as well. The Mario & Luigi series saw its first release on the DS with Partners in Time. Animal Crossing made the jump to handhelds with Animal Crossing Wild World, Advanced Wars Dual Strike, Metroid Prime Pinball, Kirby and the Canvas Curse, and Super Princess Peach rounded out a fantastic lineup from Nintendo that put its competitors to shame. Nintendo even released the first entry in their incredibly successful Brain Age series during 2005. Third parties jumped on board with quality titles too. Konami released Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow, Capcom released Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Square Enix launched Final Fantasy III, a remake of the Famicom Classic, and Sega released Sonic Rush. All of these series would see multiple successful installments across the Nintendo DS over the years. The only massive disappointment to come to the DS during 2005 was Pokemon Dash. The lackluster racing game was just the first of many Pokemon spin-offs that would call the Nintendo DS home. All in all, the software library for the Nintendo DS grew exponentially during 2005 and helped push the Nintendo DS sales further and further. Nintendo started 2006 off with a major announcement. A new version of the Nintendo DS was on its way. In January, Satoru Iwata revealed that the Nintendo DS Lite would be released in Japan in March of that year, with a release in other regions to follow shortly after. The redesign of the Nintendo DS was slightly smaller, and utilized better lighting to give brighter screens. Nintendo moved the stylus from the back of the system to the right-hand side for ease of access. The revised model would cost the same as the current Nintendo DS, putting it at $129.99 in the United States. The Nintendo DS Lite launched throughout the world in 2006. However, due to the system's increasing popularity, stock shortages occurred for the Nintendo DS Lite throughout 2006 and early 2007. In early 2006, many of the biggest games first shown off for the Nintendo DS were already in players' hands. One notable exception was Metroid Prime Hunters, one of the first games ever shown for the system. Hunters was developed by Nintendo Software Technologies, an internal development studio for Nintendo based in Redmond, Washington. At the time, the studio was best known for creating titles like Wave Race for the Nintendo 64 and GameCube, as they largely focused on designing games with the Western market in mind. NST took on the task of developing Metroid Prime Hunters. After Retro Studios, the developer behind the Metroid Prime reboot, were unable to commit to the project. Metroid Prime Hunters was originally given a 2005 release date, but the title would miss its deadline after early criticisms. Despite the title being made with multiplayer in mind, Metroid Prime Hunters did not feature any sort of online play options. The delay gave designers time to improve other aspects of the game, notably in increasing the frame rate and cleaning up designs. Metro Prime Hunters launched on the Nintendo DS in March of 2006 in North America, with other regions receiving the game in late spring and early summer of that same year. Hunters was praised for its unique first-person shooter gameplay. The title used the Nintendo DS touchscreen for shooting combat and puzzle solving in a way to mirror its console counterparts without using analog sticks. The game received favorable reviews and managed to even win a few end-of-the-year awards. Sales were less than stellar with the title seeing most of its success in North America. Unfortunately, Metroid Prime Hunters would be the last Metroid game to release on a handheld Nintendo console until Metroid Prime Federation Force was released on the Nintendo 3DS over a decade later. One final game shown off for the Nintendo DS during its reveal at E3 2004 was finally released in May of 2006. New Super Mario Bros. was a hotly anticipated title at the time. 
Not only was it Mario's first original outing on the Nintendo DS, but it was the first original 2D platformer to star the plumber since 1992's Super Mario Land 2. New Super Mario Bros. combined the classic 2D gameplay of the Mario series with sleek 3D graphics, leading to a 2.5D style of play. The game was released in North America and Japan first, before Power Regions received the game a month later. The game was a huge hit with critics, receiving positive reviews and multiple awards before the end of 2006. New Super Mario Bros. was an even bigger hit with gamers. The game went on to become the best-selling title for the Nintendo DS, with over 30 million copies sold worldwide, and spawning the very popular New Super Mario Bros. spin-off series. By the end of 2006, everyone wanted a Nintendo DS. This included a young preteen who spent the last few years racking up countless hours on their Game Boy Advance. On December 25th, 2006, I woke up to a brand new Nintendo DS Lite under the Christmas tree. Alongside it were copies of Pokemon Ranger and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, accompanied by a starter set that included some game cases, headphones, and a carrying case. The popular handheld had just joined another gamer, and its influence would shape me for years to come. Thanks for watching. This is the second part in a multi-part series about the Nintendo DS. You can support this series and channel by liking the video and subscribing. In the comments, let me know about your first experience with the Nintendo DS. In the next episode, we'll continue to cover the Nintendo DS through 2007 and beyond, and take a look at one of the system's biggest competitors as they enter the ring.